Guys, we're at a project that we've been working on for a few months now. This was a two-family brownstone, and we've actually permitted it to combine it into a single family. We're working with JTA, Joe the Architect, as well as the homeowners, to combine the upper unit with the lower unit. I'm actually standing on the first floor of the original second unit, and then behind me is a staircase that leads down into what was once a separate unit. Speaking of which, this staircase was actually a big component of this entire renovation. This staircase here is made by Cuca Studios, uh, and it matches just about exactly as to what the staircase above from the second to the third floor. And the reason that we did that was this staircase here was once all enclosed and completely separated from the downstairs unit. And this was actually fabricated off site. Uh, and then we worked with our carpentry team as well as Rich Costa to get this thing installed, which is what made the connection from this unit downstairs. Here and then you see like right above your head there, Brian, that corner kicks in. And then of course we had to open the floor up here because we had to add a staircase that leads down into what I'm calling the work from home space. So why don't we go downstairs? I wanna show you some of the detail. There's a lot of millwork detail into what was a pretty complicated space to renovate. One of the things that we had to deal with down here was the existing space. The existing space was a renovated one bedroom unit. Uh, and when we removed everything, we found a lot of actually structural concerns. The way everything was structured, the way everything was supported, had to be brought back down to essentially a brick shell. In talking to our structural engineer, we actually realized we had to install a new footing system from a mechanical standpoint, but also from a structural standpoint. What I mean by that is that we had ductwork that needed to be installed throughout this living space that had to be done underneath the floor system. There's a, a tremendous amount of investment going into this space, so we wanted to bring it back to a position where we knew we were going to be able to deliver a 10 out of 10 product. With that being said, we actually installed some helical piles down into the earth, as well as a concrete gray beam uh, that spanned across those helical piles. Once those were installed, we were able to come back and frame an entirely new floor system, get our mechanicals in, our ductwork in, our plumbing in, and then work into framing what is now the new layout uh, for this lower floor. So starting behind me, we have our first front office. The windows right now are covered up just from a construction standpoint. All of the windows were existing, but what you see in terms of all the framing, the ceiling, the wall framing in the floor framing is all brand new. Uh, again, we worked within the brick shell that was here and framed everything brand new, knowing that we had some really tight tolerances in terms of uh, not only the modern aesthetic, but also the tight tolerances in the fact that we were trying to maximize height and of course space uh, in an otherwise narrow brownstone. So we have one office here. We actually have a, a, a closet over here, which we were able to tuck in uh, this Balco access panel. The space for the gas shutoff and the water shutoff. We actually installed a flow sensor. Uh, that way they can monitor any water flow when they're, when they're traveling uh, and also remotely shut that off. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a future episode. And then of course that Balco access panel has a nice flush look when everything's shut and then they can finish out this closet any way uh, that they need. We've also tucked in all of our AV equipment into this closet. Again, it's really just a, a, a an opportunity for storage, especially when you're in the city, anytime you can have storage uh, makes a big difference. But otherwise this room, you know, some of the details that I really appreciate is the way that they had uh, done these registers. Uh, you can see the nice trim around. Uh, all done in the white oak flooring. And then you have these nice linear bar grills that have a little bit more of a modern detail versus something that sits on top of the floor and that's it all flush. And similar to uh, the HVAC, we've done the same thing with our floor outlets. So our carpenters came in, made a jig and actually routed this so it's completely flat. And then you have your, your cover on it. The reason why it's in the middle of the floor here is the intent is to have a desk facing out you have a nice TV on the wall uh, and you have all of your plugs and stuff going down into the floor rather than running across onto, say, a wall. One of the coolest details in this entire space is this door. So this is actually on a Fritz Jurgen hinge. And when closed, you actually have that aesthetic that that door is all part of the millwork. So I'm going to actually move some of this foam just temporarily for, the, for you guys to see. 
but this entire wall here is all walnut stained. And this is designed to be essentially a hidden door on the left. And then you have some doors here on the right, which open up to storage. You have some of your switches for your, your floating fireplace. The fireplace is actually ventless. Uh, vent and it is gas so when you have a ventless gas fireplace it burns really really hot to avoid having to vent to the exterior which was a an important spec on a fireplace like this because it's very difficult for us to get not only out of the building but also in a spot where we could vent the fireplace safely uh, without impacting floors above um, so all of this was made by our partner materia and then we have this section over here so we have shelving as you walk, walk down the stairs here, all of that LED lighting built right into the bottom side of the shelf. Really nice looking opportunity to have a little display as you're walking down. Let me fix this before Brian gets behind me. I will say I appreciate that everything gets covered up. You know, you can see that the millwork is, you know, we're in the final stage here, but the millwork is still being protected. Uh, because of how sensitive it is and we want to make sure that we're you know delivering a product to the client that is truly brand new um, and not something that we're running the risk of damaging um, or having scratched before they're able to enjoy it flipping around the millwork scope we have this wet bar here we have a, a concrete-esque uh, countertop and then the doors I actually want to talk about, uh, these were all done, installed. Um, everything was actually completed uh, and we ran into an issue. The hardware for the poles on all the cabinets were installed on the door in a way that looked great, uh, but our doors are typically made thicker than say a three quarter inch door. They're typically seven eighths or maybe uh, sometimes one inch. Uh, and when we had installed that hardware, it actually made it very difficult for you to grab onto it. Um, so the team material took that back. We actually milled those doors down uh, to the adequate thickness to work with that hardware, uh, and they're gonna be uh, reinstalled next week. We very well could have avoided it if we had that hardware on, in hand. Uh, we did not, we got that hardware later, but it was an oversight kind of on our part as well as um, our, mill work, our mill workers part. Uh, so we said, hey, stuff happens, mistakes happen. Uh, we know how to fix it and, and we're able to make a, a quick fix. We'll get all of that installed. So they've taken really, uh, advantage of really all the space. Again, you know, you see this custom made drawer here tucked into the triangulated um, section of underneath the stairs. You have a door here, you have the hinges on the right because you'll have that be able to swing out uh, additional storage. And then you have a door drawer your refrigerator, and then you have your bar sink here. Full details I really appreciate on here is this antique mirror. Our glass vendor came out, actually templated in between the shelves, uh, and then we actually installed the shelves and then installed the mirrors after. And then again, Materia installed LED lighting, not only facing down, uh, but facing up on the back mirror. Back mirror. But it's a really, really cool um, look gives some depth to underneath the stair, it actually makes the space feel a little bit uh, bigger, but it has more interest to it than just say a traditional mirror. I'm standing in what is the living room. So we, like we, we talked about, we have the millwork there with the TV, the fireplace. We'll have some furniture in here. Uh, we have a bathroom in there. We'll come back to in a moment, uh, but we'll head upstairs here. Uh, and this steps up uh, primarily due to just the way that the building is structured. And what I'm standing above is actually the existing utility room. And there was actually an addition put on this brownstone uh, years ago. This is the second office. So like I said, there's two offices in this home. Uh, really cool textured paint finish in here. Um, some beautiful windows. Again, I think that's really important in an office space to have some natural light. Um, and then we have a closet here. I wanna talk about the way we have actually done these doors. Uh, we fabricated these doors in our shop um, and typically you're, you're seeing a ball catch at the top. Uh, we've actually switched that to a rare earth magnet. And the reason is, is you, the ball catch, we find that it's just super frustrating. You're constantly adjusting it. Uh, and it, oftentimes it sounds like it's scratching um, the catch itself. So this rare earth magnet has a small space. It's about a, about a 16th between, but that magnet grabs it uh, and centers that door, holds it nice and, and tight closed. Add a little rubber bumper here and it's gonna keep those doors closed. 
and not have that um, metal on metal contact. So these magnets were something that we got from Rayburn Hardware. Uh, if you guys are interested in getting that spec, I'm sure I can find that for you. Um, again, just a, a, another closet to keep additional items in. Again, taking advantage of any cubic feet footage that we have. Turning around, we actually have this cool brick wall. This is actually the original brick wall to the back of this brownstone. Like I said, we, there was an addition put on at some point. So this is exposed and what you're seeing with these bookshelves were actually two original windows that were in the back of this home. Uh, JTA actually designed these bookshelves. We slipped them in, took advantage of the, the two existing windows. And then again, we have our floor outlet on the floor installed in a flush manner. Uh, to allow for the desk to be centrally located and not having cords running off to the edge. When I come back out here uh, to the left, we actually have a backyard here that will be completely renovated. That's phase two that we're actually jumping into now. It will be a space for parking, but it will also sp be a space for entertaining. Uh, and then headed in this direction, uh, we have another closet. Uh, and then heading back down, um, you probably see these niches here. Both these niches were designed for um, the aesthetic purpose, but also worked out where you could actually tuck the handrail in here and have it not impede with the overall staircase. I had mentioned that they wanted a full bathroom in this space. Uh, so some of the details that, I, that they were really important to them is they wanted a full size bathroom. They wanted a stand up shower. Um, they wanted uh, and they wanted additional storage. So starting from left to right, we have an additional window in here, so we have plenty of natural light. Our friends at Materia also built this floating vanity, all white oak. Full tile backsplash. We have a medicine cabinet here. Uh, this is actually tucked into the backside of that other window, or that window in that wall that uh, we actually built the bookshelves for. Uh, and then of course we have the shower with framed glass. Framed glass was actually a detail that they had went back and forth on. Uh, typically we're seeing frameless glass, so there's no, no metal. Uh, but here was an aesthetic decision and they have that nice black frame all the way around. Um, Two-tone tile, they have that really wide plank, 10, about 10 inch wide, uh, faux wood looking tile on the back as well as on the floor. And then the guys did a really great job, but if you look closely, that front edge, which is that two inch piece of tile, it's actually the drain body. So we use the Schluter drain body in the front and that, that actually comes out and all the water will drain down into that. Um, especially with an aesthetic like this, we don't want to be looking at the drain or having the center drain. So it's pitched right, right towards the, the valve control wall. Uh, and of course we have our niche. Uh, but one thing I wanted to point out was this additional uh, built-in. The guys at Materia built this and this actually pulls out uh, and has adjustable shelves, uh, which is really nice. You can adjust any of these shelves up and down, um, but have plenty of storage for um, a bathroom like this, especially being that it's not their main bathroom. It's quite a bit of storage uh, for a small space. Last detail I want to point out is everything that you saw in terms of all the window and door casing was a maple stained, actually a custom color right, like this. Uh, but if you look closely, this is all white oak uh, and they did a really nice job where the jam is actually two-tone. So the white oak goes into your doorstop and then transitions into maple. And if you look in the back side of the door, it's going to be the same thing here. You have maple and then you have white oak on the back side. So that's one of the benefits of working with a custom mill workshop. You can work, you can get those details uh, really fine tuned. And then this door that I passed by three times, this actually heads down into a utility space. At one point, this was accessed by a ladder. Uh, you can actually see up here, this was where there was an existing aluminum ladder that had uh, went all the way down to the mechanical space. Uh, we've tucked in a small staircase here, uh, cleaned that area up down there, poured a, a, a mat slab, uh, just to give them something other than dirt uh, in their mechanical space and give them additional storage. Again, you know, in a brownstone like this, even though they're adding overall square footage uh, to the space, uh, it's nice when you're able to have additional storage uh, here in the city. That's a quick overview of what, we, what we've been working on the last few months here in the South End. But we'll come back for a final reveal once we get that exterior scope completed.